Hey besties, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I am so grateful that you are here. My name is Sarah Kate and I'm going to be talking to you all about how to become a reader. So I have personally been a reader for basically my whole life. I did take a small hiatus in college. My freshman year is actually when COVID hit. So my freshman year I didn't really read much and then COVID hit and I actually started be to become a reader again. So this is all of my tips on how to become a reader as an adult. I know it can be really difficult we all work jobs we all have very limited time but these are some very realistic tips on how you can become a reader as an adult I know again it can be difficult take all of these tips and pick and choose which ones work best for you put them together and just give it a shot if it's not for you that's totally fine but at least give it a chance reading is such an incredible journey and brings you to so many incredible worlds that you'll never experience in your day-to-day -day life it's a great form of escapism for your personal life I know I use it all the time. I work a nine to five desk job and reading for me is just that escape that I don't get whenever I am at work. <laughs> Along with working a job, I have a very active social life with my roommates and my friends. Again, this is how to realistically make time in your life to read. Even if you're an extrovert and you're very busy, you can do this. I believe in you. Let's get into a little bit of how to become a reader. If you see me looking off to the side, it's because my computer is here and I have like a whole notes thing because I came prepared. If you know me, you know I like to just type away so that is what I'm looking at over here my first tip this is going to sound really silly but hang on you need to prioritize reading with any hobby whenever you're getting into it it's not going to be natural for you to want to do that so you have to actually prioritize the fact that you want to read and that you want to become a reader my best tip for this is to block out time in your schedule if you were I work 8 to 4 30 usually and then you know I'm making dinner I'm working out etc so that kind of like 8 to 10 p.m. time is the perfect time for me to sit down and be able to read. I do like to be asleep by like 10 and I like to at least be in bed by 9. So really that between that 8 to 10 time is going to be a perfect time for me to read. So on days where I'm not busy, I will block that off and tell my roommates like, hey, at 8 o'clock I'm going to my bed. I'm going to read. I let them know that in advance so that when 8 o'clock hits, I am coming back to my room and having some personal reading time. This next tip might also sound pretty obvious, but you need to put a away every single distraction everything that could possibly distract you let's be real mainly it's going to be this right here my phone is going to be the number one distraction for me I will be reading and just like look over at my phone and be like oh like maybe I should log on to Instagram oh maybe I should get on TikTok like no girl put your phone away put it on do not disturb throw it across the room, put it in your dresser, put it in your nightstand, whatever works best. Because if I see my phone, I'm probably going to end up getting on it. What works best for me is putting it somewhere where I have to physically stand up and walk over to get it. And I'll have my Apple Watch on in case anything important comes up. But between the hours of 8 to 10 p.m., like really, what is that important? probably nothing. Another great way to do this is to make sure that you have a dedicated reading area, whether that is a chair or a part of the couch, etc. that that spot is your reading spot. So whenever you go and you sit in that spot, you are going to be reading or doing something productive because if that is a spot where you always watch TV or you get in your bed and that's where you sleep at night, like you're going to fall asleep. You're going to start doing other things. So make sure you have a dedicated spot that is for reading. For me, this is gonna sound weird but like I sleep on the left side of my bed so I will sit and read on the right side of the bed so that if you don't have a chair just pick the other side of the bed that you don't sleep on because I'll just roll over whenever I'm ready to sleep and sleep on the left side, but that right side is my productive side of the bed. I also have a chair out in our living room that is so cozy for reading and I will sit in that and read as well. Lastly, for this tip, I recommend setting like a 15 to 30 minute timer. Start small, start with a 15 minute timer and then have those 15 minutes need to be for reading and then five minutes can be for a break for Instagram, TikTok, what I read like, but set a five minute timer and then that time is for your break and then go back to reading for 15 minutes and then have a five minute break. This is really similar to what they call the Pomodoro style of studying. I believe it's what it's called but you set a timer for that point where you're studying and then you set a break and then you study and then you break and you just go back and forth back and forth and then you can always grow that time. You can start at 10 to 15 minutes of reading and then grow that to 30 45 minutes of reading. This is really helpful for whenever I'm feeling very very distracted. I will still do this to this day because sometimes 
sometimes it's still hard for me to read. So even if you are an experienced reader, this is a great method to just kind of help you be able to focus on reading. I've also been thinking about doing a video, um, kind of the Pomodoro style, like study with me, but the read with me. So like 15 minutes of reading, five minutes of a break, kind of going back and forth. Which, is this something that you guys would be interested in? Like kind of like a read with me, kind of help you focus, but you have something on in the background. If you have ADHD like I do, I need something on in the background while I'm doing something else just so that my brain has a couple things that it's focusing on and it doesn't get bored of the fact that I'm reading. If you think that this would be helpful and it's something you would be interested in, please let me know. I would love to be able to film one. I had this idea the other day and I really want to do it. My next tip is to make sure that you find your personal genres. Just because everyone likes romance does not mean that you have to like romance just because everyone likes romanticy or fantasy or mystery thriller or YA fan like whatever it doesn't matter just because everyone else likes one genre does not mean that that is what you have to like as well and you will kind of start to find what you enjoy reading as you read so you're going to read a fantasy book and be like mm, hated that I say give each genre at least two to three tries it might have just been that author or the book that you chose that you didn't like but you kind of know what you do and don't like. I enjoy a mystery thriller, but only every once in a while. It's not my go-to genre. So I know that I have to be in the mood for a mystery thriller. Personally, I'm a mood reader, so I can't just pick up any book and read it. I have to be in the mood for it. And that is why my TBR is so long because I have a little bit of everything in case I want to read that specific type of book. I personally love fantasy, romanticy, romance, anything of that sort, but I also go through phases. Just because I loved romance at the start of this year does not mean that I'm in a romance mood right at this very moment I could want to read fantasy for the rest of the year and not pick up a romance book it doesn't matter and don't hold yourself to these standards of like well I'm a mystery thriller girl and like I'm not in the mood who cares pick up another book it doesn't matter you don't have to stick to one genre you can have a little bit of each you can have a lot of one a little bit of this one and even a little bit of this one like it doesn't matter find your genres give each genre a chance you might find that you didn't think you were going to be into historical fiction but you found this one book that made you fall in love with it and now you love that author in historical fiction give everything at least two or three chances just to kind of curate your personal book style and book taste it's not going to be the same as everyone else's everyone has a unique book taste and that is the beauty of reading and the beauty of this community is we are so welcoming to everyone who has a different book taste and i love that about us another note on this is to not be afraid to read like crappy like wattpaddy ao3 books it does not matter if a book brings you joy and it's a crappy written book it doesn't matter read it honestly some of those bingeable books have gotten me through book slumps and would i read them right now and enjoy them probably not but I was just in the mood for them. I was like, you know, what? I want to read a crappy romance book that reminds me of my Wattpad days, a werewolf fan fiction. And you know what? It's fine. Read it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if somebody deems something literature. Literally, who cares? Read what you want to read. Have a great time doing it. And that's all that matters. You are the only person that you have to impress. So don't try to impress other people by reading only certain types of literature. That honestly is a whole nother rant for a whole nother day. I hope you get my point with it though. Kind of in the same sphere, don't be afraid to DNF a book. DNF equals did not finish. It is a-okay. I have so many books over here that I've started, realize I'm not in the mood for it and put them back. And I'm like, oh, you're for another place another time and that's okay. I'll come back to you later. Or maybe I got 50% of the way through a book and it's like, I need to put this one. I literally got so far through by a thread and was like, I don't like this guy. He's annoying me and I'm going to put this book down. And you know what? Even though all of my favorite book girlies gave it a five stars, it's okay that I didn't like it. So I put it down and I said, not for me. This author, not for me. And that's okay. Do not pressure yourself to finish a book and put yourself into a book slump just because you wanted to finish a book. It does not matter if you finish a book or not, literally put it down and move on. You do not want to put yourself into a book slump that is so much harder to come out of than it is to just put the book down and go find something that you actually want to read at the time. If you're a mood reader like me, this is especially important because we never know what we're in the mood for until we start reading a book and we're like, yes, this is, this is exactly what I want, but it just might not be what you want right now and that's okay. However, if you are enjoying a book and you're just finding it hard to sit down and read just in general, 
push yourself to finish that book because that book might be incredible and it might just be the fact that you are feeling really restless and you just can't find time to sit down and read. It's not the book's fault, it's my fault. I literally cannot sit down and just read the book. So I will use some of my methods that I am talking about in this video to kind of help myself finish that book and I'm like that was an incredible book. It was just for some reason this week I'm feeling really restless and I'm not really feeling in the reading mood and that is also okay. Not every single day, every single week is going to be your ideal reading week. If you're just getting into reading, I also recommend don't buy the big books. If I bought like a really thick book for my first one, oh my gosh, I would never finish it because it's not as encouraging to read a very large book. For me, I always started really small with my books. So buy like a 300, 350 page romance or mystery or something of that sort. This is going to help you finish more books and as you finish more books, because they're shorter and they're not 600 pages, you finish more books, you finish them quicker, you get into that reading mood and then you're going to feel, oh my gosh, I'm on top of the world, I finished this book, I finished three books this month, I finished two books this month, whatever it is, that's wonderful. That's going to really encourage you. The more books you finish, the more you're going to feel in that groove of reading. So I recommend starting small and working your way up to the bigger books once you know that you actually can and do enjoy reading. Also coming from the world's biggest overthinker, don't overthink your next read. Just pick it up. Just do it because I will sit there and think for three days about what book I'm gonna start next. Just pick up a book and read it girl. Like why are we being so indecisive? Pick up a book and just start it. Don't think too hard, don't think too much. Figure out what kind of mood you're in and then just pick a book based on that and enjoy it. If you're like me and you are balling on a budget, I recommend getting books from thrift stores such as Half Price Books or like literally even the Goodwill and Dirt Cheap and things of that sort. Thrift stores are where I find actually a lot of my books secondhand because they're cheaper, people have already read them, but they're only gently loved, gently used, so very good quality books. And even if they are a little bit like bent or whatever, who cares? Who cares? You're gonna read it anyways, you're probably gonna spill something on it, you're probably gonna bend it. It's okay that it's not in perfect condition. I have had to come to terms with this and now I loved thrifting and finding books second hand and this gives books a second life as well. As well as you should get books from your library. Library cards are free. A, as long as like you, you live within the county lines. So personally, like I have my Nashville, Tennessee library card. I can then download the Libby app and download Kindle books and audiobooks to be able to listen to as much as I want. Now I can have like a specific number of holds and a specific number of things in my library, but it's a great way, like you put yourself on the wait list and in a couple of weeks or sometimes they're even available right then, it depends on your personal library. I'm like ready for that book. I'll try to make sure that I'm putting in for books in advance when I know I'm going to want to read them in a couple of weeks. I know that I'm ha taking a road trip this Friday, so I went ahead and requested a couple of audiobooks in advance so that I would have something to listen to. It's kind of just thinking a little bit ahead, but it's free. I highly encourage you to support your local library because that's what keeps them afloat is whenever you check out books. So at least go in, check out a book, even if you're not going to necessarily read it, check it out because that helps support them. Just going in doesn't help support them as much. Lastly on this one, I highly, highly recommend a Kindle and getting Kindle Unlimited. It's $13 a month after taxes and I have just absolutely loved my Kindle Unlimited. So I have this cutie little Kindle sleeve that I got from the farmer's market. And then this is the back of my Kindle. I just have all of these super cute stickers on here, which I actually put on in a vlog. So if you watch that one, and then I have this, like, you can't even really see it, but it's a flower print pop socket to be able to hold my Kindle while I'm reading. So why is there a dude on the front? Like, I have the one with ads, so anything that comes up here is, like, an ad, and I don't know, he's kind of scary. <laughs> I absolutely love my Kindle, and it's really nice to be able to read as many books as I want in the month. On Kindle Unlimited for $13 a month, I can read as many as I would like. I find myself using this all the time. Even if I have a book physically, I will download the Kindle Unlimited book because it's included in my membership, and reading it on my Kindle sometimes will help me read really fast. I do find that I read a lot faster on my Kindle. At first I was like, ah, oh, but I'm such a physical book girly try a Kindle because you might end up loving it. 
I absolutely love it and I did not even think that I would. Lastly, my favorite tip is to find reader friends. Having a community of readers around you has been really great for me personally. I just absolutely love having those girls that support me and that I can support back. We talk about our latest reads, we talk about this and that, we give each other recommendations and they just really help encourage me to read. We'll check in all the time, They're like, oh, what are you reading right now? What was the last thing you read? What did you think about it? Even finding a book club, I personally don't have one, but I would love to join one. And just being able to read at least one book a month where, you know, other people in my community are reading it, we get to talk about it. It encourages you to finish a book by a specific date, to go in and make sure that you've read it so that you can talk about it. This really has been the best thing that I found that I've done for my reading journey and I highly, highly recommend it. So I'm quickly going to just read off some of my favorite book recommendations. Honestly, I would pull them down from my shelf, but I think I'm literally just going to read them because it's going to be so much easier. I have been talking for so long. <laughs> Some fantasy book recs that I have for you. The Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. The Dance of Thieves duology by Mary E. Pearson. Daughter of the Pirate King. This is the first book I read getting back into reading in college. Amazing YA. I love it. Powerless by Lauren Roberts. We Hunt the Flame. Once Upon a Broken Heart. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Stupid in the Wings of Night by Clarissa Broadbent. And then for romance, we have the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver, Cowboy Romance. The Rebel Blue Ranch series, also a cowboy romance. Better Than the Movies, a YA. Any and all of Allie Hazelwood's books, which are right here. However, I highly recommend Love Theoretically. It was my absolute favorite. And and then her collection of little novellas, um, Loathe to Love You, is also really great as well. Again, three novellas in one book, so you can kind of feel like you're finishing up those books really quickly. The Windy City series by Liz Tom Ford. I personally did not like the first one. Push past it or skip it, doesn't really matter. The rest of the series is so good. So good. The first one, ignore it second through I think she's up to five now amazing I absolutely loved them Lauren Asher um she has written the like front billionaires in the dreamland billionaire series I recommend both of them the dreamland billionaire series I recommend if you enjoy Disney if you don't don't read it I love Disney so I thought it was great and the lakefront billionaires is just really good her books are a little bit longer so they're more emotional depth as well as the romance adds a little bit extra for me and then finally behind the net by Stephanie Arthur Archer. This is a hockey romance and the second book so good. I love the first one too but the second one especially. Next for women's fiction or fiction. Any of the Abby Jimenez books. Okay they are romance but they have a lot of character development in them and I find that I really really enjoy having a bit of like the women's fiction element as well as the romance and I feel like for hers yes they do center around the romance but they also center around what is happening actually in those people's lives in the moment. Lastly really any Emily Henry books. I know that Emily Henry also has romance in hers. I would not advertise these books as romances because they do have so many other elements in them. Friendship and family and personal relationships, things of that sort. It is much, much more than just a romance. If you're looking for just a romance, I would not recommend either of these authors. These are great if you want other elements in with your romance as well. Lastly, we have mysteries slash other. I recommend YA mysteries to just kind of get you into this genre. They are so easy. They pick you up like this and they usually go really quickly. I love the natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Incredible. I'm only halfway through it right now but it has been such an incredible ride as well as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I haven't actually read it. It's my best friend's favorite book though so highly recommend that. And The House Made by Frida McFadden. I read the first one. I feel like the first one was enough for me but my friends have loved the second and third ones as well. My battery is flashing so let's wrap this up really quickly. If you have any personal tips or tricks for reading please 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 put them in the comments below. I love being able to share tips and tricks. Everybody has different things that works for them individually so please to help out all the other readers put your tricks down below for what helps you personally read and get you into the reading mindset i'm also curious as to what books got you into reading or what books you're planning on reading to hopefully kind of spur that getting into reading mode again please do not base yourself on what you see online these girls the posts that they read 13 books in a month it's sometimes not realistic for everyone i read about four or five and even then even if you read one book or one book the whole year it does not matter your reading journey is going to look different than other people's don't base it off of what you see online be confident in who you are and what you love and 
maybe pick up reading on the side. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more bookish content and join our little family that we are creating. I love you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye!